Excellent. How are you doing, Hayley? I'm great. How are you? Mate, I'm, I'm fabulous. So, Peggy, your character's got a bit yeah. of Ginger Rogers about it, does she? Yeah, I know. I shamelessly stole that quote. I'm using it um, <laughs> a lot. But yeah, I felt it, it was very inspiring to use that kind of quote, you know, for me. Just thinking, you know, that's kind of Peggy through and through. Anything that, she, that Captain America can do, she can do. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't mind a machine gun, young Peggy. She certainly doesn't. Well, um, I started off with a pistol and uh, during the training, and then Joe came along and, and watched my training and just went, do you want, do you want a machine gun instead? I was like, yes, yes, I do. So I, <laughs> I uh, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with that. It did seem like uh, you were enjoying the, uh, shall we say, dominance over the... Uh, soldiers in, the, in those scenes. Well, sorry, I think it's just, it's, she's resorted to desperation. I don't think she enjoys it. I think it's just a necessary part of her day. Yeah. I think she's kind of been inundated with cheesy comments like that and uh, she's pff, tired of her own voice and just resorts to physical violence. <sighs> Not something I've ever done, so that was quite hard for me. Was she, is she the kind of guy that would have gone for like a pre-Howard Stark uh, Captain America, or is it strictly only the, the six foot four full of muscle guy that she's into? Um, well, I like to think that she she found him finds him refreshing, and there's there's an integrity that he has that that she hasn't seen before, and she's a kind of a, there's there's a kindred spirit there. She has her own struggles getting to position where she's in, as he does in his own in his own life, and uh, so they relate to each other, I think, in, in that that respect, and then. Um, you know, give him some man boobs and there's desire added into that, so it's perfect ingredients for a love story. <laughs> Chris Evans' man boobs, really? Yeah. What are they like face to face? Um, pert. Very, very real. And uh, um, I couldn't quite help myself during the, the, the scene. I, it was the first time I saw him, it was the first time I was that close, so I just kind of touched them gently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're right. I can't really blame you, I guess. Yeah, they, they're really impressive, yeah. He's a pretty handsome guy. Yeah, he is. He, anyway. Yeah, he doesn't, doesn't mind fighting Nazis, which leads me to my next question. It uh, takes place at a time that's probably quite unfamiliar to a lot of people, let's say born after 1990. Um, right. Which is a lot of people who are going to be seeing this movie. What do they need to know about the time this film was, was set? Well, it's, um, it's used as a backdrop. It's, it's making no political statement whatsoever. There's no historical truth in it. And uh, the baddie is, he, you know, he's, he's part of an elite kind of group called Hydra, which isn't real. And he has a red skull as a face, so that's not real either. So um, I don't think anyone's going to be missing out. Uh, it's not a history lesson at all. It's just a very fast-paced, action-packed film with a great love story running through the center of it and a man that is able to fight his own limitations to become... I'm kind of a, a godlike figure, really. How's that? <laughs> it work, would work on the bottom of a poster quite well. Yeah, yeah. But it is easy to make films about, you know, killing Nazis and it is about fighting some sort of fundamentalism or anything. It's getting very deep. It's wow. Here for a haircut. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but yeah, I suppose so. It's fighting for your ideals, I suppose, and. Um, uh, and, and defending what you believe in, which is something that you know you can doesn't it can exist anywhere in any small kind of world and pocket of life. Uh, so it's something that kids, will, I think, will love, and uh, as well as as uh, you know men and women. And uh, I think it just it's a it's a, has great appeal for a summer blockbuster. You've been working as an actress for quite some time. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, the Golden Globe nomination came along at the uh, the other um, a few months ago. Yeah. A few months back. Uh, how, if that did, I'm interested to know here in Hollywood, how does something like that affect your career and the way people see you? Uh, well, I don't, um, it, I didn't really see how it did um, at all, <laughs> really. Yeah, that's cool. um, it was um, incredible to be, to be nominated and to be there. It almost felt like I was watching television all the time because you don't often, you know, I've never been able to, to see people like that in real, per, in real life. So it was just a really thrilling event. and. Um, uh, kind of gave my gave me a taster for that kind of glamour side of Hollywood, which was was really fun. That's kind of a role that you play within itself. Um, but then I, I went straight back to London and and uh, and kind of got on with it. 